name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Heavenly Father. Come, Holy Spirit of the Father and the Son. Come by means of the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, uh, your most beloved spouse, um, Lady Seat of Wisdom, cause of our joy, and St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Simon and Jude on this October 27th vigil, pray for us. If you remember from um, chapter 2, we had the overview of um, the wounds and the lies that go with them. So for baptism, it was uh, the wound of being rejected. And we remember Margaret uh, Sanger. And uh, when people get rejected, they get, um, there's, there's a built-up anger uh, because that's because why? Because we're not meant to be rejected. We're God's beloved, and people should not treat us that way. And so it's understandable that. And she had plenty of anger. Um, the identity lie around that. I am not loved. I'm not wanted. So that was for so baptism heals that rejection wound, and it um, heals us and gives us that true identity, heals the identity lie, that we're not loved, not wanted. Yes, you are. You're God's beloved royal son. You're mine, Jesus says, the Father says, the Holy Spirit says, and you're mine, and we are yours. Okay. The second sacrament, then, uh, today, uh, sacrament of Holy Communion, the Eucharist, um, deals with the wound of abandonment, and the identity, a lie around that. I'm alone. I No one cares about me. Uh, and says, no, I abide with you, Jesus says. If anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Um, so it's um, healing that abandonment because he's always with us. And St. Therese um, asked that he be with her sacramentally always, not just in Holy Communion, then for like 15 minutes. And Mother Pauline, uh, her sister Agnes, believed that the Lord granted that prayer. And we could ask for that too. <laughs> As like little kids, you know. Hey, uh, we don't have to go around trying to prove it to people. Uh, he's still in me, even though it's more than 15 minutes. Well, why not just uh, ask away and uh, trust that he isn't restricted to just 15 minutes? Or in Italy, they used to tell me, I don't know, Father, it's seven minutes that we're supposed to, you know, uh, hang in there and maybe not run out the door to the parking lot. Just seven minutes. <laughs> hey, anyway, seven minutes, 15 minutes. Why not 24 hours? Why not nonstop? Ask. Okay. Um, so, so chapter four, Holy Communion, uh, his abiding presence. So that's um, page 51, how Holy Communion heals the wounds of abandonment. And um, uh, the bad news, as Dr. Bob uh, writes here very well, could be any number of reasons why uh, we feel abandoned in life. The death of a loved one, broken friendships, not being protected in an abusive situation. Or perhaps, like me, he's saying, you too experience the heartbreak of divorce in your family. Um, frequently, these abandonment wounds get transferred into our relationship with our Heavenly Father. So if my visible earthly father, like Dr. Bob's dad, walked out on them, then I'm not sure, I don't, I don't feel, I don't think the Heavenly Father loves me either. Um, but it wasn't like that at the beginning. Adam and Eve mirrored and participated in the most holy communion of the blessed trinity, those three persons that have um, abide with one another nonstop from all eternity for all eternity, and we were drawn into that um, right at the beginning, Adam and Eve, um, and they experienced the peace of the interior gaze, as John Paul II says, uh, the peace of the interior gaze. This is the Father um, looks dynamically at the Son. The Son receives that gaze and um, looks back, and that bond between them is the Holy Spirit. So too between Adam and Eve. No fear, 
no holding back, no feeling awkward. You ever try to look at somebody in their, to their eyes for more than like 30 seconds? And, you know, even people are madly in love with one another. And after a while, it gets awkward too. It wasn't like that at the beginning. Okay. Um, he says there on page 53, do you recognize this longing, my soul thirsts for God, the living God? Do you, long, do you recognize this longing for greater measure of God's presence in your own heart? We can enter into communion with him now. The church teaches that this is why Jesus gave us the sacrament of his presence as a means for us to continually abide in him. The principal fruit, says the Catechism in 1391, of receiving the Eucharist in Holy Communion, communion is an intimate union with Christ Jesus full stop. Indeed, the Lord said, who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. So, um, and the Eucharist is the sacrament of the presence of Christ Jesus. He loves each of us in a unique way in our practical lives. Love consists in this, not that we have loved God, but that God has loved us. And the Eucharist is the proof of that. Um, so, uh, but then we go to Mass, and um, even though it's called the Sacrament of Unity and a Bond of Charity, uh, you know, how, why do so many people feel like Mass is not that? Uh, are we really operating in our communion, in our communities, in our Masses? Uh, in a unity like the early church, can most of us say that we are experiencing authentic communion? Well, whew, yeah. And then part of that, he points out, is that we approach Mass in a... Um, we don't take to heart what Jesus did at the first Mass, at the Last Supper. He took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples. And Dr. Bob says, I, you know, I invite you to consider that that's what he wants to do with you and I as we come to Mass. Take us, bless us, the Father's blessing. You know, renew that baptismal uh, intimacy and confidence and acceptance. Takes us, blesses us, breaks us, you know, with the help of the readings uh, different people at Mass, we look around, you know, oh, I don't get along with that person very well. I'm a family member right next to me. Um, and But I'm going to let go of that at Mass. I'm going to forgive uh, 70 times, 7 times. Um, it's going to break me. I'm going to feel like I'm being broken. Yeah, I have to give of myself. Uh, um, I have to, you know, allow myself to suffer right there at Mass. It's not just about me get. What am I going to get out of this? Is what can I put? It, what can I put into? What can I let the Lord do with me? Take me, bless me, break me. He was broken himself. Um, I mean, uh, he suffered, and the, the Last Supper, every Mass, it's a wedding banquet, but it's also the Last Supper uh, where he, you know, went out and sweated blood afterwards. Um, and then give, to give us. We give, he gives us to others. So that's really helpful. Uh, more bad news there on page 56 on what Mass usually is experienced like for a lot of people, maybe most people, uh, including us priests. Lack of unity. Many of our churches, families, communities look a lot like the rest of the world, disconnected, fragmented. Um, there's over 50,000 different Christian denominations Divided over the name of Jesus. Um, and what's the solution? Hmm. Page 58. Uh, they're confronted right then with this literal meaning of Jesus' words as he challenges them to leave if they don't believe his teaching. My flesh is true food. My blood is true drink. Um, the phone was just signaling me something about low, low on power. Okay. Um, page 
So the solution is that um, when they broke bread in remembrance of his death and resurrection after Pentecost, these early disciples experienced the risen Jesus. His abiding presence filled their hearts, permeated their communities. Witnessing his resurrection power in their midst, healing and miracles abounded. By all evidence, these men and women and children were on fire with the Holy Spirit. So that renewal uh, that's meant to happen after we're taken, blessed, broken, given, um, Even if they didn't comprehend it first, they would eventually come to understand that Jesus was promising to be with them in the person of the Holy Spirit in a particular way in the sacrament of Holy Communion every time they gathered to remember his passion, death, and resurrection. And remembering is not like we tend to remember in an ordinary sense of remembering, but it brings, it makes it present in that Hebrew mindset of remembering. So, um, and he helps us by that constant 2,000 year teaching that it, it is bread then it's taken, blessed, broken um, given and the words of consecration are pronounced over that and it becomes changes from a what to a who from a thing a piece of bread to the second person of the trinity who abides with us, remains with us and invites us to remain with him to remain with him, you know hopefully priests hear this and uh, consider the um, what it says in the Missal, that a period of silence may be observed after communion. How long? Doesn't say. To abide, remain with their flock, and not just close the Mass right away. To help people to learn that he does speak. And if you want a powerful, and, and, and he communicates with his beloved, especially in that intimacy, that union of Holy Communion. Now, if you want to get a powerful um Example of that, then read that last story about Father Edward, uh, who was so hurt from having been neglected, abandoned by his father and mother, just not receiving enough care and love early on, that it was just this deep inner wound in him. And with all of his, you know, training uh, in the seminary, growing up, all that didn't heal it. Um, it is deep. Uh, hole in his heart. Uh, he had a debilitating physical condition that prevented him from lifting his arms over his head. He lived with constant pain in his hands and shoulders. And so when Dr. Bob prayed with him uh, at a priest retreat and then before, before Mass, he asked the Holy Spirit to reveal to him what the source of the pain was. And the Holy Spirit showed Father Edward, with the help of Dr. Bob praying with him, that the ache, you know, the, the restriction in his arms um, and shoulders was from him wanting to reach out to hug and be hugged by his parents, the people who are supposed to love him. That didn't happen. And the pain in his shoulders from the burden of feeling responsible for everybody because of that self-reliance having to do it on his own, which was never meant to be for any of us, we're supposed to. We're meant to be like little children and let the Blessed Trinity help us and those around us help us also. But that wasn't happening for him. And then, as they invited the Spirit in, the Spirit of Jesus and the Father, um, Jesus began to heal. The pain went down, not right away. It was gradual. So a healing prayer does. Um, Jesus does show up, and. Um, and over three, it happened over three days, so that's really something to um, uh, to keep in mind. And also, Dr. Bob makes a big point of um, this quote from Father Thomas Keating, the Trappist, about how why why are, why are people uh, not healed? I mean, he he spent years receiving Holy Communion worthily um, and wasn't healed. Why then at that retreat? It was because he said that. Um, I guess because somehow on that retreat he was able to abide and go into deeper prayer, you know, like more simplified meditation, hanging out with the Lord, and that that, uh, as, far, as Father Keating says, um, the Eucharist received in Holy Communion awakens us to the permanent presence of Christ within us at the deepest level. Contemplative prayer reduces the obstacles to the transforming energy of the Eucharist so that we can manifest in our attitudes and behavior the living Christ within us. 
reduces the obstacles to the transforming energy of the Eucharist, the power of the Eucharist. If we do not have a discipline to reduce the obstacles in us to experiencing the presence of God, the full power of the sacraments are diluted and do not achieve their full potential to transform us. So that sitting at the Lord's feet that I've been um, encouraging and give, um, giving pointers about from Teresa and John of the Cross and other videos, uh, that you know, the one thing necessary that, that Mary's doing and Martha's criticizing her for, sitting at the Lord's feet, the more we do that, the more we dispose ourselves then um, to letting the Lord um, get us ready so that when we do receive Holy Communion, uh, He can work more powerfully and heal. And that's what happened with Father Edward then, and it's a wonderful story. So uh, just some practical questions at the end and pointers. You know, ask the Holy Spirit to bring to light a time when you felt alone. Um, be attentive to Jesus' presence currently, or remember a time when you were especially aware of his presence, and then enter into that again, a manual experience. Um, just lots of um, practice by abiding in God's presence. I encourage you to read that. Okay. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Blessed All Hallows' Eve, and uh, All Souls' Day. <laughs>